All right, so this is IP long nose deck from the summer event, and this is just what he played. It was pretty sick. Um, it's a pretty interesting deck. He was looking to basically use at any cost. Um, during this event, after this event happened, Helio and Rakano all got nerfed, so this deck actually kind of got untouched by nerfs. So it could be a good contender going forward. Um, I know we've had a lot of time in the throne bracket, but everyone's just been grinding expedition, so this is kind of my first chance to take a look back into throne, so... I wanted to go through some of the event decks and just see like what's good, what's still good, what would change, and you know if it's viable or not. Um, this looks pretty fun to play, it's just a big removal pile basically, and then eventually you add any cost them for 24 with prodigious sorcery, so seems pretty neat. Um, I guess we're playing Vara to strip Aegis, we've got Malediction. Some cool stuff, we can transpose, grab Honor of Claws, I like that. And then just uh, Rindra and Akari are super solid too, so seems neat. Uh, kind of weird to be just main decking Savage Incursion, but uh, I guess we can't play it in our market, so gotta main deck it. Um, I guess we're not an etchings deck, because all of our guys we want to block with, and we're not playing that many guys, so that kind of makes sense. And... Uh, that explains why we're just playing a four-cost market. Um, let's just play some games with it and see what happens. I mean... Let's be real, Royalty. Everyone looked at at any cost and was like, Oh, what if we give this double damage? I, I can respect that someone else made the deck, but... I'm just saying, IP Logno was the one to actually place in a tournament with it, which is the only reason I'm kind of looking at it, honestly. <laughs> but, uh, that's cool that he made it. Um, shout out to that resolves. I guess unless IP Long knows hanging out, we'll never know where he got it from. So I guess the uh, the war of who thought of it first shall end here. Uh, yeah, no. I guess we keep this one, though. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm actually... Actually, uh, the Eternal Devs made the deck first, so no one gets to credit. No one gets to have any decks. No decks are theirs. Whatever Eternal Dev tested gets credit for every deck we ever make. I'll just start crediting Eternal Devs every video I make. Um, uh, actually, uh, I'll have you know that, uh, the Devs made the card, and, uh, they were the first ones to make the deck, because they made the card. So... Check yourself. Yes. What are we playing against? I am confused. Step aside, type it up. Haunted Highway was just haunted scream deck splashing fire. It wasn't that <laughs> It wasn't that crazy. The shadow strike. Uh 
Am I just gonna die to a fucking fireball deck? Nothing annoys me more than Milos shutting off our fucking power. Why does he need to do that? I should just play Fire Dex, so then I can't get punished by Milos. Step aside, tyrant. Cool. Well, let's... Yeah, we'll discard that. Fuck your firebomb. It's just like... Does Milos need to counter life gain and also counter, like, even-handed golem? And counter... And counter insignia? And have charge and overwhelm? And be a 3-3? with relevant creature types? Does he need to do all of that? Is that a thing we need to have? I don't think so. I don't think so. I personally think the answer to that is no. The strike. Also, I misplayed there. I was supposed to play Shadow Sigil first. Let's discard some fire bombs, chat. Oh boy. Let's just draw zero firebombs here to punish this asshole. Nice. Hog. Yo, here's the firebomb. On the bright side, we can give firebomb double damage. We want to do that. I'm gonna give a firebomb double damage because it's funny. Nice firebomb, though. Ball. I make sure that, uh. I make sure that every time I'm recording something to go onto YouTube, early on in the video, early on in the video, I try and rant as hard as I can about Milos and Jack. Um, and to make sure that all of my content has me ranting about Milos and Jack, I just do it every time I see Milos and Jack. 
And that way, whatever video the devs choose to watch, they get to just hear me ranting about Jack. And uh, in that way, maybe we'll get that card nerfed. Either of them would be fine, but preferably both of them. So I'm doing my part. Fighting the good fight. I'll have you know, Andrew Bakstrom came into my chat and followed me and never said a word. So I'm kind of a celebrity. Kind of a big deal. I know, I know. I was shocked myself. What's in here? Do we have anything that just counters this? I suppose there's counter spell. We could have rejection this. Okay, we're not completely fucked. We're just mostly fucked. So we kill the ones with void bound. And then, like, play Akaria, and we just hope we're not dead. That ain't it. We're just gonna murder everything that has Void Bound. More like the heart of the I'm dead. I actually think they have lethal on the board regardless of what we do, so we'll move right along. Moving right along. Yeah, he is. Vows for thinning. Who would have thought? Man. Could you guys imagine um, putting eight vows into a deck as a meme? And then uh, starting a war on Reddit, but knowing it's a meme? But then everyone takes you seriously, so then you just have to double down and commit to the meme. Could you imagine that happening? Wouldn't that be crazy if that ever happened? Why is even Xenon the reason for Jack and Milos to exist? When even Xenon doesn't even exist itself anymore? Even Xenon it itself does not exist. I don't think that's a good reason. I don't think this deck's super broken, so that means this deck should exist as a good argument.
I respect that opinion, but it's not mine. <laughs> Get him. Blood for blood. Play it. Main phase, try and hit a power. Hog. Oh, are we playing unitless? Thought we were playing like Horu. So what, rejection's pretty good here, right? The question is, is do I just hold transpose? Probably not. We want Aegis to protect her own Akaria from turn to seed. Uh, I'm gonna still grab this rejection. Hunt them down. Comes. It'll be good eventually. That's soon enough for me. Perfect world, we untap, we get to just, oh. Sure, why not? Why not? Why not? I think that's a pretty good line. Starts fucking annoying. <laughs> Not that I know. It's not my deck. It's a... But, in my opinion, shutting him off Aegis seems pretty good here.
Bonk. Pulling out my Magnum Bonk. Which card? At any cost? Why would at any cost be too powerful? There's like one deck that plays it. Unless you're just- well, there's two decks that play it. But... Jack and Milos just go in every fucking fire deck! Oh, on base fire? Let's play Jack and Milos. Why not? Who's ready for the big brain play? <laughs> this is like guarantees lethal. A big brain. Maybe they're not a problem, but I hate playing against them. They do too much, just plain and simple. They do too much and they have relevant bodies. That's the problem. It's just like... They're way under-costed for all that they do. And... I could rant about it all day. But what part of Fire's faction has anything to do with gaining permanent power and toughness when your opponent gains life? What? Why does that even make sense? I can see, like, okay, Milo says your opponent can't gain life, but that's not what it says. There's not a lot of fire cards that just hard pump your dude. I, I can't even think of many. Like, just permanent pump? It's all usually temporary. So why does fire all of a sudden get this dude that, like, like, okay, maybe firebrand, like, maybe the fireballs make sense. Or maybe you want to have it say, okay, your opponent can't gain life. Cool. But he shouldn't get absolutely fucking ridiculously massive when your opponent plays life gain. How are you supposed to beat a fire deck if you don't just slam a bunch of life gain into your deck? Like... Why are you punishing people for playing life gain? I don't understand. It's already bad. Like, 
Lifesteal decks were bad before Milos came out. And now that Milos just occupies, like, 50%, like, let's say you're playing on the ladder. About half of the decks you play against are going to be some sort of fire-based aggro deck. And they're going to be playing, like, that fire-based aggro deck is going to have four Milos and four Jek in it. Like, that's what you're going to play against. And... The rest of the meta will just be random shit. So, if you're trying to play a life gain deck, you're just boned. You're not going to win. <laughs> you're just going to have a really bad time. Because that's like 40% of the matches you go against, they're going to have fucking Milos in the main deck. And sure, maybe they don't draw it all the time, but every time they draw it, you're like, well, I kill it or I lose. Sometimes you kill it and just lose anyway, because they'll just rip the fucking Firebomb. Firebomb shuffles into the top 10 every time. My experience is Firebomb shuffles into the top 10. On the people laddering, there's a lot of people that ladder with just freaking... They're just trying to get into Masters, and they're just going to grind Stone Scar aggro. They're going to grind Sky Crag aggro. Sky Cragro, whatever you want to call it. And just... They're out there grinding. They're winning, too, or it wouldn't work. Like, you wouldn't see them if they weren't winning. And royalty, it also depends on what time of day you're playing at. Um, earlier in the day, uh, like in the afternoon and like around that time during uh, EST time, there's a lot more aggro players. And then like around this time, you'll start to get into more mid-range. There'll still be some aggro. This is a generalization, but it's just kind of what I notice. But I've done my ranting on Jack and Milos. I think I've hit every single topic about them I don't like, so... I think I can stop ranting about them for now. I can see that, Stranley. Yeah, I mean, that's totally fair. If you're just, if you don't have a lot of time, like, not everyone has time like I do to just sit here and fuck, freaking bang out games. You know what I mean? I'm more worried about, you know, having fun or brewing crazy shit. So I'm more likely to get punished by Jack and Milos than the average player. Hey, Drasla.
them down. Well, this is fun. Two control decks walk into a room. Chat dies. Was that the fourth? That no, was the the third. Well, wonder what their win con is. Maybe I just go for Honor of Claws. I did want to wait till they had Aegis though to do this. Backlash, nice. Chat, we got main deck backlash up over here. Torch is pretty solid. I I think I hate Jack and Milos both pretty equally, but if I had to pick one to go, it would be Milos. I like that I can just do all this at the end of their turn. He plays rejection on me right now, I swear to god. No! <laughs> oh, okay, we had Aegis. <laughs> Good old main deck backlash. This deck's pretty good. Yeah, Milos is a 3-3 three, three for 3. No other effects.
If you like to play lifelink decks... If you like to play lifesteal decks, then you'd probably also not like Jack or Milos. I I like to play a good lifesteal deck, so I'm one of the ones out here getting punished the hardest. Like, look at this fucking guy. The shadows strike. I mean, the market adds some interesting synergy. But then, the problem with the market is there's cards that just completely hard counter other strategies that are just ubiquitously played across markets. And that's where it starts to get annoying. It's like, why should I play my big Spaghetti Relic deck if I know they're just going to spend 1 to 3 power and set me back like 18 of my power? Like, what? I just don't play that deck anymore. Like, it just doesn't get to exist. Look at that. Firebomb in the top 10 cards of my deck. As is fucking customary. Look at that fucking shit. Maybe we could have won this game. It happens so often! It's like I'm playing fucking Hearthstone. Well, we're alive. I'm sure I just rip a firebomb off the top of my deck and it finishes me off now that we've stabilized. Because why wouldn't I? Here's the other firebomb, right? Cool. So, we lost the game because of firebomb. That- that's... I'm so glad I just ranted about Milos for the past, like, 20 minutes. Just to lose to that shit. Like... It's honestly fitting. Hey, Hoyt. Like, who is that fun for? It's not me. I, I'm not the one who has fun there. Like, why does that card need to have Hearthstone text on it? Like, I don't understand. Why don't we just print a card that just shuffles spells into your deck that says whenever you draw this, you lose. That'll be fun. The players will love it. This is the matchup where we just lose. Like, <laughs> I don't think we ever beat this matchup. If they get, like, an even half good draw, we just lose the game. Yes. 
That's what should happen to aggro. You should just lose. <laughs> I'm biased though. There's the Azindal. Is this just like helping my opponent if I play this? I need power. Hard casts a var or a zindel in my face here, and then we lose. That was the wrong card to take. Definitely take the annihilate there. Yeah, Stranley, you obviously should have just played Jack and won. I don't understand why you didn't. Maybe try doing that. Our opponent's losing this game because they didn't draw their Milosis. I haven't seen a Severin deck the entire night. Not a single one. Maybe an Expedition that's a little more popular, but... In Throne, it doesn't exist. Now you'll see what I'm capable of. Oh, yeah. I prefer a throne. Maybe I'll play more throne when Jack and Milos aren't an expedition. Well, I mean, I'll play more expedition when Jack and Milos aren't in it. Really? I switch between the two? I'll focus on whichever one has a tournament coming up. That way I can make content for people that are interested in the events. But I'm still pretty regularly racing out, uh, making content for both. So. Uh.
awkward. What are you gonna do? I will never turn into a draft streamer. That will never happen. The fact that they're having their first draft tournament after like four years of Eternal being out or however long should explain exactly why I'm not a draft streamer. The devs just don't care about draft. Like, sometimes they'll get little small updates. Are you kidding me? That's the freaking card he ripped off the top of my deck. Royalty! You've never even seen me draft! Nice top deck, I guess. What a fucking champ. Just top deck Akaria casually there. Alright, give me a turn to seed. Oh! <laughs> well. I'll tell you what. If Direwolf Digital ever makes draft actually matter, then I'll play it. So this weekend, there's a tournament that gives me a chance to get into Worlds. So you know what? Sure. I'll play draft. But other than that, I don't care. Yep. Yeah, I think I did. That might have happened. Does anyone know how many uh, sorceries I'm playing? I'm thinking it's three. Oh, I am out. We don't have any sorceries left in our deck. We're gonna have to get spicy. There's no sorceries left in our deck. This is gonna be one of those weird games. I need a minion, I guess, to just start getting a clock. That's not a minion. Now you'll see what I'm capable of. Can I counter this? Counter. A treasure for you. Damn. The shadows strike. 
I decayed it, Momo. It's like a zero. <laughs> it's a minus six, minus six. Well, he's out of fucking symbols. We're still just dead on board. Unless he forgets how to attack. <laughs> Very uh, professional noises coming out of my mouth. Okay, uh, I'm sure this deck works, but it didn't work for me because I am bad, so, yeah. Cool deck, though. Uh, it's actually fun to play, um, but I didn't do very well, and maybe I should have been playing more main deck backlashes, and yeah, this deck seems sweet. Nothing changed to it. You could probably ladder with this, although I'd recommend something faster. But if you're trying to push rank, um, maybe you just play Zen and Reanimator. We didn't get to play against a lot of different stuff, but as you can see, we just got absolutely slaughtered by Zen and Reanimator. So I would maybe just play that instead. But that's the deck. Let me know what you think. Enjoy.